Marvel Studios keeps bringing home lots of money, but their movies are in danger of losing their sense of peril. A few thoughts? Can Marvel movies get out of the corner they're backed into? In this video, we'll take a look into this in detail, so please make sure you stick with me until the end of this video so you don't miss out on any part of the gist, but without further delay my friends, let's get right into this one. What solution is there for the ongoing problem facing Marvel Studios? I've been making videos and reporting on blockbuster cinema for long enough now to know that you never ever write Marvel off. I recall in particular the build-up to James Gunn's first Guardians of the Galaxy movie was one such moment. A sizable gamble being released in the traditional box office graveyard of August. This, I remember many prophets of doom suggesting, was the bit where Marvel tripped. Of course the truth was anything but this. The third Guardians of the Galaxy film is well into production, the first two are amongst the most beloved MCU features. Likewise, going through the responses of its two most recent movies, at the time of making this video, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, and Thor, Love and Thunder, you might think that the Marvel bubble is burst, neither on the whole has been particularly strongly received. A quick check of the box office numbers, though, suggests that there aren't too many sleepless nights at Disney HQ, the pair have grossed the best part of $2 billion between them worldwide, and whilst those numbers are lower than Marvel Studios is used to, there's still not another movie or studio out there on the planet that wouldn't want those numbers. And yet, as a watcher and appreciator of the movie, I'm puzzled to how they get to the fundamental part of that's facing the ongoing franchise. How can they bring stakes back to the stories? Let me take you back to Avengers Endgame. I think it's an astonishing achievement. The first hour though, I firmly recall how I was loving the sheer boldness and bravery of it. Then time travel kicked in, straight away that took away finality, but again there was some skillful steering there. The whole idea that people lost 5 years meant that even though time travel reversed the much loved cliffhanger ending of Avengers Infinity War, the characters in the broader world still had some bruises from it all. There was some consequence. Plus the end of a couple of Avengers 2, had commerce not demanded, Avengers Endgame or perhaps John Watts' Spider-Man trilogy would have been the curtain. The story had come to an end and an incredible cinematic blockbuster achievement would have been concluded with a bit of a chef's kiss. Mwah. Yet Disney has shareholders and Marvel movies are the studio's key live action cinematic asset. The wheels had to keep turning, more movies needed to be made, and now there's a streaming platform that needs feeding too. As such, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, as fans have come to love it, was expanding. If you want to get every Easter egg, understand every reference, and know what's fully going on in Doctor Strange 2, you need to invest in your team in not just the films, but the shows. It's not compulsory, and the films are written in a way to try and make them appealing to all comers, but in all interlinks, and the time commitment required to stay on top of it all from the side of the fence is increasing. That, to me, isn't the problem though. The problem for me, and I've deliberately sat on the sidelines for a while before making this video, is the idea of multiverses, a narrative tool that gave Marvel movies a get out of jail card. What other problems is Marvel trying to wrap around? The stakes are gone, it's already hard to watch a major blockbuster movie that's able to narratively wrong foot you, now the multiverse era runs the risk of making it not even matter. Should it be able to pull something off like this? Still, this is the kind of thing that can be scripted over the movies themselves are strong, but therein lies another problem that Marvel's trying to figure it out. I think there's broader problems going on there too. The recent phase of movies, with the exception of Shang-Chi, I would suggest have been pretty flat. I'm very aware that each of the movies had its fans and detractors, and I'm not looking to pick a fight or anything. But I do think on the whole, the quality has dropped. I see more and more people talking online about almost feeling obliged to watch the next Marvel film rather than eagerly booking midnight showing tickets. A common complaint is there's just too much of it now. That is a little less special, but of course, is Marvel becoming a victim of its success? To Marvel's credits too, the movies are never boring, but also the high of its work feel very much in the rearview mirror at the moment. Personally, I felt that half of Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings was the the brightest spark of Marvel's movies that have managed since Avengers. Mind you, I'm counting the Spider-Man movies a little on the outside, given they're a Sony co-production and serving two masters and two universes there. The last two movies, which are the new Doctor Strange and Thor sequels, have been edging towards well, 
not very good in spite of their moments. Not just the heavily reported CG issues of both movies, but it's also just that they've fallen a little short of where they used to be. After all, I think even the most fervent Marvel fan would accept the movies we've had in the last three years are a notable drop for the ones we had the three or four years of before. Not that all cinema's moving, but Marvel movies aren't, arguably with the exception of Eternals. I feel like they're keeping up. Look at how Mad Max Fury Road should have revolutionized action cinema back in 2016. Demonstrating how physicality comfortably triumphs CG when it comes to spectacle. Now, my question is, is Marvel feeling just a little of that pushback? There's a confluence of things here. But ultimately, it might just be that Marvel has been and is hugely successful. As such, this particular phase is inevitable. Write Marvel Studios off at your peril, and even at the time of making this video, I find myself hugely excited at the next movie that it's got lined up, Ryan Coogler's Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. I think Coogler's a superb filmmaker and appreciate the shadow of grief over the movie. It's the first Marvel movie in a while that I'm keen to see as quickly as possible. Next up, let's talk about the five issues I'm having with Phase 4 of the MCU right now. Without wasting any time, let's get into these issues I'm currently having with the MCU and talk over some problems I'm pretty sure several of us can agree on. The first being there's just too much content to keep up with now. It's aggravating that I have to watch a show about a character that I was never even a big fan of to understand plot points for a film about a character that I want to see. It's annoying that if I miss the whole show, I'm gonna be so lost in the MCU, it's just too much for one person to be able to do. Then there's the problem of some of the new characters haven't been introduced well. Firstly, let me make it clear that I do like the new characters. I loved Kate Bishop and Hawkeye and feel that Haley Steinfeld will be a great addition to the MCU, but some of the other new characters in the MCU during Phase 4 have not been as well done. I'm going to start off with the obvious here and point out to the Eternals, there were so many new characters and new powers that it was hard to keep track and even when I could, there was no personality to be seen. My next issue is that the other characters we've grown to like have been pushed to the side or aren't like they used to be. I could go on for hours about how some of the characters from previous Marvel movies have felt a little more muted in Phase 4, but I'll use one of the best examples instead, Thor in Thor Love and Thunder. Here they stripped away Thor's strong character development that he had in the third movie, as well as the complex character development he had in both Avengers Infinity War and Endgame. Next up, the visual effects have definitely taken a hit. Okay, so this is more of a technical issue than an opinion, but anyone with eyes can tell that the special effects for the MCU properties have taken a hit over Phase 4. I mean, think about the eye on Doctor Strange's head in Multiverse of Madness. Nah, that was not it. This is not up to MCU standards. And wrapping it up, there's the issue of the quality which has been inconsistent. This is arguably one of the biggest critiques of the MCU right now. The quality of the movies and TV shows has just not been consistent in the slightest. There have been some good movies in Phase 4, but I'm concerned for the future of this universe if most of the shows coming out right now are mid at best. But my friends, that's going to conclude today's video. If you found the video helpful, please do consider giving us a thumbs up, and don't forget to share the video with your friends and family. We'll see you next time.